Okay, so I've had the Sony FX3 for over a full year now, and for the last six months, I've been using the Atomos Ninja V with that camera. Now, because I'm a DaVinci Resolve user and they don't natively support ProRes RAW, I haven't been able to take full capability of this monitor until now. So a few months ago, I stumbled across this video by Sydney, and I tried all of these steps to make ProRes RAW work in DaVinci Resolve. However, I wasn't happy with my results. Now, fast forward to now, I saw that he posted a new video about this ProRes RAW subject in DaVinci Resolve, and I actually noticed noticeable differences this time when trying exactly what he said to do. So over the past few client shoots that I've been doing, I've been pressing record on the Ninja V so that I could capture ProRes RAW out so that I can make this video to see if it actually is worth it to record when using something like DaVinci Resolve as your preferred editor. Now to make this video more digestible in case you're someone wanting to also work with ProRes RAW in DaVinci Resolve, I'm gonna break this up into a few different topics. The first topic that we're gonna actually cover is ease of use. So getting started with this monitor in ProRes RAW is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is go into your camera settings and go into the HDMI output and make sure that you turn on RAW. Now, after you have your camera all set up, you then have to go to the monitor and first activate ProRes RAW. To do this, you have to go to the website and look at the instructions, and they're gonna give you this key, which you can then put into the monitor to activate that feature. Next, you go in, you select your camera settings, you select your codec, which is ProRes RAW. You can also choose what flavor of ProRes RAW you want, and there you have it. You're done setting up everything, and you're now ready to film. Now, while everything else is pretty easy to set up, the only thing that I found difficult is to actually change the frame rate. You can only do this in one place once you have the monitor connected, and that is in the HDMI output settings. I wasn't able to change this in the regular places that I would be able to if I didn't have a monitor connected to the Sony FX3. Now this definitely isn't a big deal, but I did want to let you guys know that in case you were stuck in 60 frames per second, which is an issue that I ran into and didn't know how to change that to something that you normally would record in like 30 frames per second or 23 frames per second. Now let's move on to talking about how to convert this ProRes RAW video into something that DaVinci Resolve can actually read. Because as I stated before, and the whole reason why I'm making this video is because DaVinci Resolve will not understand what this video codec is if you try to drop it in natively. Now the application that I've been using to convert these files is a paid application called RAW Converter. I've done my research and this seems to be one of the easiest ones and I can confirm that it is pretty easy to convert these files from ProRes RAW into CDNG, which is something that DaVinci Resolve can read as a RAW codec, which means you have all the flexibility that you would have when working with any RAW footage like Blackmagic RAW or Cinema DNG. Now, it is very important to note that this could take up a ton of file space. Now, for me, I was choosing the uncompressed version, and this was a lot of storage on my computer to handle. Now, from here, I strongly recommend that you check out Sydney's video on how to set up DaVinci Resolve correctly, because he's done an incredible job, and I don't really want to steal from his video because he helped me out so much in making this video possible. So go ahead and check out that video right above me, but for now, here's a quick screenshot of my project settings that I use to edit these files in DaVinci Resolve. So after looking at these files in DaVinci Resolve, I wanna talk about the differences that I noticed between recording in camera versus recording in ProRes RAW on the monitor. So getting a pretty good image out of both of these files was pretty easy. Now, if you did follow Sydney's video step by step, then you will come out with a pretty well-balanced Rec. 709 image on the timeline as soon as you put the footage there. However, if you do use the in-camera footage, then you do have to do a little bit more work to actually get it to look like a Rec. 709 image. So I found that the tools within the raw tab work much better than the tools in the primary tab when using these raw codecs. Now I'm not saying that you can't get the same image and you can't pull all the information back when working with these in-camera shots. However, I'm just saying that I found it much easier to work within the camera raw tab and accomplish the same thing. 
And because I did all of these adjustments within the raw tab, that means that I had all of the rest of the tools fully available because I hadn't yet touched them. Now, while there was a noticeable difference with the highlights and the color tools when using these ProRes raw files in DaVinci Resolve, I will say that this really comes down to personal preference. Now for me, it's personally not worth it going through all of these different ways that I have to convert the footage to use it in this raw codec in DaVinci compared to just using an SD card, putting the footage right on my computer and immediately going into editing to get very similar results. Now the only place that I actually see myself using this is if I'm working with a beginner DP or a beginner filmmaker and I'm actually giving them my camera to record and I wanna make sure that I have the most flexibility to change any images as far as white balance and exposure later on in post if they didn't get it perfect in camera. But for everyday shooting, when I'm in a studio environment like this, where I have so much time to set up my picture, there's not really too many times that I would make such a big mistake that I need to change it later in post significantly, whether that's white balance or exposure. That being said, if you are someone who values quality over all the file space and all the time that you would spend converting those files, then honestly, this is for you because you get that flexible latitude of being able to change your camera settings later in post, this may be a good option for someone like that. So huge shout out to Sydney for making that video again. And if you are someone who's interested in color grading in DaVinci Resolve and you're a beginner in this program, then I recommend that you check out this video right over here.